He was God one and only. He was God to be worshipped alone. He was the only God, true God to be worshipped alone. This message is the message of Islam. So Musa salam, Moses, was he a Jehovah's Witness? Was he a Christian? Was he a Jew? Yes. No, no, he wasn't. No. He was. Okay, let's go even back. Abraham the prophet. Abraham the prophet. Okay. Was he a Christian? Was he a Jew? No. Right. Did he have a faith and a belief system? No. Actually, he did believe in something. He did believe in something. Good. But did he have, he didn't have what did he believe in? Did he believe in God? Well, he said he questioned if the sun and the moon was God. No, that's a rhetoric that he used to convince people. And they said, look, oh, now they said, they're not my God. And towards the end, he made a point, how can you, you know, worship this God? I turn to God, you know, so he was. No, he's not questioning. You see, imagine now I'm telling you so like... He, so he did question. No. He did. This was a, an evidence that he used as a rhetorical strategy to convince people of an argument about God's existence and who real God is. For example, if I tell you now, you know what, this is my God. And then someone kicks it and it falls and the camera breaks and they say, oh, that cannot be my God. And you will say, yeah, how can that be God? So I can use this as an example strategy to demonstrate to you that this is not even worthy of calling a God. When, if you look at from the Quranic perspective, how Allah says, these are tilka hujjatuna, these are our evidence that we gave to Ibrahim, to his people. We gave as an evidence so that people can understand who God is. So these things about this, these are, you can call it his, his argumentation that he used to let people think. He says, look, ah, oh, maybe this is God, right? He's my God. He's great. And then the sun set. He says, oh, that cannot be my God. That sun sets. This is a process of arguing with the people, going with, along with them, with their understanding and the thought processes. And they say, yeah, maybe he's, yeah, the sun is God. Sun is great, powerful, bright, you know, very um, warm and hot and so on. And then the sun sets. That cannot be God. And you agree, yeah, that cannot be God. A transformation of the thought processes. So Ibrahim Salam, Ibrahim the Prophet, even in the religious scriptures before Islam, he's known to have worshipped and believed in one true God, one true God only. He submitted and surrendered his will to this one true God. Do you know what that state is? Anyone who submits and surrender their will to the will of one true God, that makes that state of submission called Islam. It's an Arabic word, that's why the difficulty. Islam means simply submission and surrender of someone's will to the will of the Creator, one true God. Anyone who submits and surrender their will, willingly and sincerely of course, to the will of one true God, it makes them a Muslim. So if we now analyze the faith of Abraham the prophet, did he submit and surrender his will? Yes, he did. Did he submit and surrender his will to the will of one true God? Yes, he did that. That makes him a Muslim. So his faith is Islam and he's a Muslim. All the prophets, likewise, who ever submitted and surrendered their will to God, Adam, Noah, Jacob, all of them, they're all Muslims. But the problem people have today is this vocabulary because Islam and Muslim is like a very um, taboo word. Like Muslim means someone like, like a, uh, speaks Arabic, wears a thaw from Middle East or, you know, a terrorist, whatever, right? This is kind of negative connotations or a baggage associated with it. But Islam and Muslims, there's a linguistic meaning and a technical meaning. So as I said, that tree is a Muslim in the linguistic sense. In the technical sense, it will be like people submitting and surrender the will and accepting God to be their God and submitting. That means if a prophet came and they submitted the will to God as the prophet had told them how to, they are Muslims. So when people were there at the time of Jesus, the son of Mary, do you know why I say the son of Mary? Because he didn't have a physical father. 
It was a miraculous act that God brought him into existence for a reason. Like God brought Adam into existence for a reason. Like God brought Eve into existence for a reason. But they're all miraculous acts. The creation of Adam is a miracle. No father, no mother. No man, no woman. But Adam was there, living. Eve didn't have a father and a mother, but came from the ribs of Adam. Miracle. Jesus came from the wombs of a woman with no physical fatherly intervention. A miracle. The only other process of human procreation and generation is from a mother and a father, man and a woman. So, when Jesus, the son of Mary, was here on earth, what did he tell people? Be Jehovah's Witnesses? He told people to worship my Lord and your Lord, and that is a straight path. He told them, you should worship my Lord and your Lord, my God and your God. That is the straight path. And you know what Muslims, we are required to do? We are required to follow the straight path. The path that leads to success, leads to paradise, heaven. Not the path that leads us astray. Very good question. Very, very intelligent and important question. The path that leads to God is the path that God and his messengers show to us. We cannot invent this path and we cannot say, I will do my way. I will worship God my way. I will choose my path my way. It's not going to happen. It's not going to work. <coughs> we have to choose the path that God is pleased with. That's why when we pray to God, we ask for the straight path, the path of those that God is pleased with, those who followed that path. And this path God has explained, the path of the prophets and the messengers, the you know, Nabiyeen, as Siddiqeen, as Shuhada, as Salihin, the prophets, the righteous, the martyrs, okay, the truthful ones. So these are the paths that those who followed God were pleased with them. God was pleased with them. And not the path of those, those who followed that path, they received God's wrath and anger. So if people follow that path and God's anger is what they receive, that's not the path we want to follow. That means what did the messengers tell us? How should we follow? How should we worship God? So when God sends a message to us, do you know what he does? To you? To you? Like this? No. God doesn't give you individual guidance to you like in the form of books. Yeah. So God raises among mankind the most noble, the most upright, the most truthful, so that people can listen and believe in them. And then appoints them as prophets and messengers and tells them this is the guidance. So God inspires people to make them prophets and messengers, appoints them on prophets and messengers, then through them gives the guidance. Some, some of the prophets and messengers receive books, like Quran, like Injil, like Torah, like Zabur. They receive books. God's speech codified into books, kitab. And they conveyed to the people. And the people read, read, understand, understood, and follow. And the prophet explains the book. Prophet lives the book. Prophet practicalizes the book in the living. Shows you. The book says, God says, oh, establish prayer for my re remembrance meaning we need to remember God by prayer and the prophet shows how to pray to God not you go to a very cold pond in a cold weather and dip yourself seven times that's not how you pray to God that's not how God shows God will show to the prophet and messenger how you should pray 
how you should glorify God, how you should be grateful to God. That is the role of the prophets and the messengers. The prophet Muhammad was the last of all those prophets. So we should follow who? Thank you for your learning. Um, do you have any? Do you have any contact? I can... There was evidence about Jehovah from Bible. Can you give some basis about Jehovah? Um, what, what do you want to? What is it for? Because I can give you examples for some other brothers who can get in touch with you or sisters. Probably better. She's about to go to the Jehovah Witness, so she needs to clarify who uh, believe Jehovah. Do you want to know about Jehovah's Witness belief? <coughs> I don't want to know anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> How are you? I'm from Russia. I'm good, man.